Welcome to Grace and Truth with Pastor Sherman Burkhead, a devotion that's meant to encourage you and challenge you to grow in your relationship with Jesus Christ. Please subscribe to our podcast and check us out on the internet at fbcboron.org. At, uh, for today's devotion, uh, Pastor Wilson in Kenya, um, he's really been somebody that's uh, been uh, on my heart and mind a lot, and he and I get a chance to talk quite a little bit, um, but he's been really excited about the gospel and the message that we've been preaching, and he's asked me to share some teachings about the doctrine of salvation. And, and, and I realized, as, as Christians, we talk a lot about salvation when we talk about being saved, but how often do we actually stop and ask the question of what is salvation, and, and what does it actually mean to be saved? And, and, and and don't misunderstand. I think that we have a sense of what it means. And I think that we all kind of like have that feeling of what it is. But when was the last time we've actually, you know, took the time to think through the doctrine of salvation and all that it encompasses for our life and our spiritual life? Because, because although the doctrine of salvation is very simple, and it's simple enough for somebody very young, even children to understand, there's a lot of important facets to that that are beneficial for us to study and that, that are beneficial for us to grow in our understanding of who God is and what God has has done for us. Because the truth is salvation is not simply a one-time event that happens in time and space. Salvation is a supernatural act of God where He saves sinners. And that involves several important truths that really we should, I think, take the time to understand. Truths like regeneration or being born again. Jesus said that there's no one getting into the kingdom of heaven unless they're born again. Or, or justification, that we're justified from, from the penalty of sin. We are saved from the penalty of sin through faith in Christ. We're justified by faith alone, as we say. And then there's adoption, where God takes us, sinners and enemies of God, and make us part of his family. And then there's sanctification, where God progressively saves us from the power of sin through the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And then there's glorification, where finally one day that we look forward to, where God rescues us permanently from the presence of sin forever, where we'll be perfected one day. Salvation is the work of God, and that work of God is is in the past, present, and future. And because of that, we can talk about being saved, you know, in the past, that we were already saved. And then while at the same time we talk about God saving us presently from, from this world, and then looking forward to when we will finally be completely saved, when we'll be perfected, and all things will be brand new. And so with that, this topic is a really big topic for us to talk about. And I think it's important that we spend some time working through this. And so here's what we're going to do. Over the next several episodes of Grace and Truth is we're going to dive into the doctrine of salvation. And and, and we're going to really take it apart and look at the, the pieces so we can understand it. And, and we're going to do this for two important reasons. Number one, it's important for us to examine the doctrine of uh, the doctrine of salvation and all the doctrines of our faith because they help us to grow in our understanding of who God is and what God has done for us. It helps us to worship him better and it helps us to grow and walk with him closer. Number two, we're going to actually upload all of these videos to YouTube and we're going to create a special playlist so that our brothers our brother Wilson in Kenya, he can take these and use them as a teaching aid so that he can use to disciple other believers. The hope is that this will be a resource that, that he can use to help strengthen the members of his church in Kisi, Kenya. And also then when people come to faith, that he can use these as kind of like a foundational um, teaching aid. And I'm hoping that this will be something useful for that. So my goal then would be to give you a foundational understanding of the doctrine of salvation and help you to kind of get your head wrapped around the big pieces. But understand, this is not going to be a full academic tri- treatment on the subject, right? Uh, there's 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 a lot to learn, right? But, but we're only going to cover so much. My aim is to help you to... Um, uh, to have a working understanding and a working knowledge of the doctrine of salvation and at the same time kind of whet your appetite so you can go out and learn more um, and grow in your faith that way. And so in the coming installments, we're going to be talking about regeneration, um, being born again, justification, adoption, sanctification, and glorification. And they are all you know theological terms, but really once you understand them, they, they're very practical and uh, they have, you know, they're very beneficial for us to know. But today what we're going to do is we're going to begin by talking about 
you know, about the biblical definition of salvation, right, and what it is. And, and, and so really, you know, um, we're going to ask the question is, what what are we actually saved from? I mean, we know that we get saved. That's what salvation's about. But what do we get saved from? Now, the Google de- the Dictionary you know, definition says that salvation is the preservation or deliverance from harm, ruin, or loss, right? It's, it's somebody's being preserved or delivered from something negative like harm or loss. Another definition, put it this way, is that salvation is deliverance from danger or suffering, and so it's this idea that someone or something is in some kind of danger or is in encountering or enduring some kind of suffering, and then someone else or something else comes along and then rescues them from that or removes them from that. Or, or another way to say it is that it delivers them out of that, which is, I think is a pretty straightforward kind of definition. But when it comes to Christians, Right, so we know that that it's 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 being delivered from from harm. But what is it that we actually are saved from? What is the danger? What is the what is the 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 suffering that we're being rescued from? Now, again, Google in its dictionary offers the theological definition that says um, that that it is deliverance from sin and its consequences. Right, that that the theological definition of, of of salvation is is being saved not just from our sins but the consequences of our sins and i would say that that's on the right track it's fairly accurate but but i don't think that it really completely fleshes out what it is that we're being saved from I mean, we hear people say all the time, Christ died to save us from our sins. But what does that even mean? Right? What, what is it about our sins that we need to be saved from? And I'm not asking a silly question. I mean, really think about this. Is it, is it just the consequences of our sin, the, the negative things that happen? Is it the power of sin over our lives? Right? And, and why do we need to be saved from these things in the first place? I mean, why do we, you know, need rescue? Why can't we just live in those things and just live life that way? And I ask this question because a lot of people who, who really don't know the, the answer to this question have a, a flawed understanding of what it means to be saved and why. In fact, there's a pastor named Mike Leake that says that many people think that the primary thing that we're saved from these days is purposelessness. That people think that, that the reason why God needs to save us and rescue us is because we just don't know what our purpose is. That, that we're being rescued from, from the lack of purpose in our lives. He says that others speak of salvation from drug addiction or, or shattered relationships. That's what God, you know, he says that saves us from is, is you know, we're being, we're being saved from, from the chains of addiction or, or bad relationships. And he says, yet others speak of difficult circumstances in which we are facing. Well, the Bible, he says, certainly speaks of God's redemption from futility and purposelessness and even suffering. This is not the primary problem which humanity faces. This is really, really important. In fact, he's 100% correct here. God does work in our lives, and he can certainly rescue us from lots of different situations, and he does do so. But the purpose of God's salvation through Christ has nothing to do, is not about those things, right? I mean, it certainly is a byproduct of those things. Those things are a byproduct of that, but it's not the main problem. The main problem is, is that, that, that all of humans face is, is the overwhelming consequence of our sin, and that is the wrath of God, right? That is the greatest problem we're ever going to face, is His wrath, right? All human beings face that. The wrath of God is is what we are being saved from. That is the big benefit of salvation. And in fact, Paul says in Romans chapter 1 verse 18, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. What we're seeing very clearly is the scripture is telling us that God's wrath has been revealed. That is the warning that all of humanity needs to understand, right? Our sin has enormous consequences, and not only does our sin affect our physical bodies as we get sick and injured and die, and not only does it destroy relationships, and not only does does it make us slaves to our addictions, our sin has destroyed the most important relationship we will ever have, and that's our relationship with God, right? Our relationship that God has created us for. And if you remember, God is holy, righteous, and just, and he's the creator of all things, included us, and we were created by him for him. 
right? But sin has destroyed that relationship. The gulf between us and God is immeasurable, right? And and so now, before Christ, we were God's enemies. We were openly rebels against God. And not only that, we hated God and refused to thank Him and refused to worship Him. We despised Him. We mocked Him. And in our sin, right, our sin distorted our minds. It distorted our hearts so that we would love our sin and we would hate God and that we would worship created things. As the Bible says, we will worship created things, but not the Creator Himself. And then because of our sin, we pursued all manner of indecency and all manner of filthiness. All of us would. And because of that, God's righteous anger against our sin and us has been ever-present, an ever-present reality in our lives. In fact, God's justice hangs over our heads like a weight that's being suspended by a small cord that can snap and break and drop on us any time. And God's wrath, his righteous hatred, and his fury against sin has been stored up for us. It's waiting for us. And the truth simply is that anyone who faces God, who are anybody who faces God that's still in their sins, will encounter the full consequences of that sin. They will endure the fullness of his wrath. And as the Bible tells us, the wages of sin is death. We know that means. We know that that means eternal punishment. God's wrath will be poured out on those right who are in their sin, and that will be done forever. And this is a horrific reality because, because there will be no escape from this wrath. And, and it's awful. You want to know how awful it is? Look at the cross. God, God's wrath was poured out on Christ the Son as Christ died for us. The picture, the cross is a picture of how horrible our sin is but also how terrifying God's wrath will be against our sin. And what we need to realize is that it's going to last forever and ever and ever. God's wrath will be poured out on everyone who is not in Christ. Right? We also know at the same time that there's going to be a time that's coming when Christ one day will return and he will set all things right and he will rescue his people, but he will also pour out his overwhelming wrath upon the entire world. The Bible makes it clear that this will be overwhelmingly horrific. That we can't even imagine how horrible this is going to be as God pours out his justice on those who rightly deserve it. And that, brothers and sisters, is what we are saved from. When we put our faith in Christ, we are rescued. We are rescued from God's wrath and our sin. In fact, in Romans chapter 5, um, Paul paints for us a picture of the scope of what God has saved us from. And I think this is worth thinking about. He says in verse 1, Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. This is so important. We've been given peace Right? This is important because we were not at peace. We were at war with God. We were his enemies. In fact, in verse 9, it even gets more clear about what God has done for us through Christ. Since therefore we have been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved from the wrath of God. By Christ, by his blood, we've been saved from the wrath of God. And then he says, for while we were his enemies, we were his enemies we were reconciled by God by the death of his son. Much more now that we are reconciled, we are saved by his life. You see, the greatest problem that all humans face, the greatest problem that all human beings face is they're enemies of a holy and righteous and just God because of their sin. And because of that, his wrath is hanging over their head. But God, by his grace, made a way for us not only to escape that wrath, but also to be reconciled back to him into a relationship that he created us for. And that right there, that's what salvation is. It's being saved from God's wrath and reconciled in a relationship to him. In fact, the the God Questions website actually kind of gives us this definition. He says, a definition of the Christian doctrine of salvation would be the deliverance by the grace of God from eternal punishment for sin, which is granted to those who accept by God's by, by faith God's conditions of repentance and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Salvation is available in Jesus alone 
and is dependent upon God alone for provision, assurance, and security. It is the work of God, the supernatural work of God. And that's what salvation is. And that's what we're being saved from. It is being saved from God's wrath and reconciled in a relationship to him again, not as enemies, but as his family. What a beautiful truth that is. And now tomorrow we're going to begin looking at all the ways that God brings about salvation. We're going to begin talking about um, you know, regeneration and justification and sanctification and adoption and all those other, other things. But with that being said, hopefully that's a foundation for us to build on uh, in the coming days. And hopefully that you'll find this beneficial and help you to grow in your relationship with Christ. But let us come before the Lord and let us pray. You've been listening to the preaching ministry of Pastor Sherman Burkhead, a production of First Baptist Church in Boron, California. Our website address is fbcboron.org. And would you please consider partnering with us financially as we work to share the hope and the gospel of Jesus Christ with our community and our world.